destination Leica Storm Milan to test the new Leica Q3. Let's go back to the studio and uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more. And here we are in the studio. Now, let me preface the whole conversation by saying that this is not a review. This is definitely not a review because while I'm grateful to the Leica store in Milan to let me use the Q3 for uh, the testing, uh, I would be stupid to consider a 30, 40 minutes test uh, enough to push out a full review. So these are impressions, first impressions. And speaking of impression, there are a couple of things that um, need to be mentioned before going, getting into the details of, of, of this camera. I won't dive into too many technical specifications. There's thousands of videos already around that cover that, so go watch those. And I won't even talk about video capabilities because I didn't, I didn't test those just because I think this is more of a still camera, so I focused on the still capabilities of the, of the camera. Now, um, going back to uh, things that needs to be said before diving into the product uh, overview or impressions, this is a Leica product. And being a Leica, Leica product, it becomes divisive just by definition. And there are two main factors that need to be um, taken into con consideration and then playing a huge role in, ev in evaluating a product like a Leica camera. Uh, the brand fascination and the bias that this generates and the price the camera is sold at, which again, being Leica is high by definition. So let's get a couple of things out of the way. Do I feel uh, subjected to the brand fascination? Definitely yes. Uh, am I somehow potentially biased toward the camera? Probably. Um, do I think the camera is expensive? Hell yes, I sure do because 6,000 euros, I guess in dollars it's a bit less, but we're, we're about we're approximately there. It's a lot of money, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Can I afford buying this camera? Hell no, at least not now. Or I cannot justify spending that much money for me into that camera. So keep those things in mind from now on in when listening to what I say, because those are factors that can play a role into uh, the conversation that we're going to have. Now, speaking of build quality, the build quality is as good as it gets with, uh, with a, on a camera like, like, like this. It is solid, it is very well built, it, is, it feels perfectly assembled, which is something you would expect for the price point. Uh, controls are nice, uh, and they're all, the vast majority of controls are on the lens, those are tactile, and a perfect amount of friction, they really feel great. Uh, the viewfinder is crisp, and it's bright, and the screen is also definitely good. I don't know if it's the best screen in the world, I don't know if it's the best uh, viewfinder in the world. It's 
they're both good, so it doesn't really matter that much. From an aesthetic point of view, um, the tilt screen, which is one of the new features of the camera, kind of breaks the clean how clean the, the, the design is. Uh, I guess the Q2 in this regard looked cleaner just because it was everything was part of the same, let's just say, brick. But uh, it is also so useful that I don't personally mind uh, having a slightly less clean look if I have a huge um, benefit when it comes to using the camera. So as long as it doesn't look ugly and it doesn't at all, uh, I'm okay with it. The benefit of using that screen, that the tilted screen is definitely, definitely a huge plus. So again, I don't mind. Dimensions are compact, but again, compact is kind of re relative for com comparison. A uh, Ricoh GR3, which is still a 28 millimeters equivalent uh, lens and camera, it's way smaller and it makes the Leica look pretty good in comparison. But we're comparing uh, an APS-C f2.8 camera with a retractable lens uh, against an f1.7 full frame body. So it would be silly to expect uh, comparable size dimensions and weight as well. As a consequence to have a tiltable screen, all the controls that used to be on the left side of the screen are now on the right side of the camera, which makes it more useful because you can definitely use, you get everything at the, at the reach of your thumb. The macro switch on the lens is very clever and it doesn't only activate the macro capabilities, but it also changes the scale in the focusing distance again, scale in the in the in the lens so that it makes it easier for you to even manual focus if you want to. The one thing, speaking of macro and autofocus, actually manual focus, the one thing that I found some issues with is the little uh, switch that you have in the focusing ring controls, which allows you to move from autofocus to manual focus. You need to reach like below it and you just need to make sure and it's not super easy to uh, re realize that, that you're there. But I believe this is due to the fact that uh, I haven't been using this camera for a long time. I, I would say that in a couple of hours, I would probably get used to it and it would be no issues for, for me at all. Um, the aperture ring is clicky and it's clicky to the point where it's perfectly stiff for you not to avoid, not to have not wanted movement of the, of the ring. And at the same time, it's easy enough to move when you want to so that you don't have to put too much uh, force into it. All in all, it's a premium, really premium body. It feels great in the end and there's no visible flaws, which is a huge thing to say for cameras now, nowadays, and kind of justifies the price with the level of craftsmanship that Leica puts into it. quality standpoint, in a compact camera like this, uh, image quality cannot be discussed separately between the lens and the sensor because they were born together and you cannot test one without the other. So uh, one pixel peep too much and let me tell you that despite not pixel peeping too much, 
I understand when people talk about the Leica look that you get out of the that get out of this camera. Uh, it's hard to describe in words. It's a combination of colors, deep blacks, an overall look of the image that is really, uh, really uh, pleasing to look at. You may argue that you can probably get results like this with other cameras and other combination of cameras and lenses by uh, working with the RAWs. And I, I would say you're probably right. You can get very similar result working on it. But there's something uh, that some uh, satisfaction that comes uh, with using this camera and looking at the result that you get from the screen or from the viewfinder. It gets you that satisfaction that pushes you to shoot more and more and more with that with that com com combination. So um, it, it's hard to explain, but it makes sense once you once you use it. From a more scientific point of view, so from a like actually getting away the experience and all of that the lens is very sharp wide, already wide open and of course it gets better as you as you stop down but again from f1.7 it's already very 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 sharp as many have reported the field of view seems wider than 28 millimeters i felt like that as well and i think this is due to the fact that uh the lens is not very well corrected when it comes to distortion compensation and so Leica decided to come to go with a wider uh, actual field of view and then uh, go with the in-camera uh, correction that crops in. And let me show you why. Like the, you can see that the barrel distortion seems very well corrected if you look at the at the, uh, at the image that you get out of the camera. Well, once you disable the the automatic uh, compensation in uh, distortion com com compensation in your soft yeah, editing software you definitely see that the barrel distortion is quite visible now to me uh, i don't really care too much uh because that's what's happening with pretty much any camera any brand they all they all are relying a lot on in-camera compensation and, and profile lens profiles to get stuff correct and so as long as i get an image that i uh that i consider good i don't really care whether it's electronically corrected or not the corners are good as well in this camera so it's not a it's not a big factor anyways um but it, it is worth being mentioned because for the price you need to know that that is was that is was what's happening under under the hood chromatic aberrations are well corrected Again, there's some in the lens that is native with the lens, but once you turn the compensation uh, on, which is on by default, you get rid of it. So it's not a big, it's not a big problem. Um, from a lens perspective also, the macro capabilities are good because you can get really close and the image is still very usable. You don't get that softness that you can get from other cameras or lenses when you get too close to the minimum for focusing distance. So that's another, it's another, good thing uh, that you get with this camera. At the end of the day, the lens is the same that was the, the, has equipped the Q2, so the previous model, so there's nothing new that I can tell you up about that. But what is new is the sensor. The sensor is a brand new 16 megapixel sensor that can also be been to 36 or 18 megapixel if you want. Now, I didn't try this as I had a very small window that I can test the camera for so I went for the full resolution of the sensor but it's something that you can definitely count on if you don't want to waste a lot of storage space but how is the sensor the sensor is great uh, the high resolution allows for in-camera cropping uh, up to 90 millimeters equivalent field of view uh, the previous version I guess was stopping at 75 Again, I didn't use those options because at the end of the day, I wanted to use the camera for what it is natively, which is the, the, the 28, mega, uh, 28 millimeters field, field, field of view. And the sensor uh, does great with both highlights and shadows. So you can recover highlights uh, better than I thought. Uh, while we can take for granted that with modern cameras, uh, shadows are recovered pretty easily, pretty much with any sensor. But the highlight recovery that you get uh, kind of surprised me because you can work a lot in that. Of course, the megapixel, the megapixel count 
uh, takes its toll when it comes to high ISO, uh, which are not bad, of course, but the camera is good up until 6,400 ISO when you go, when you get past that, and I tested like 25,000, you can definitely see uh, that the noise uh, is kind of getting too much and ruining the image. And I could also spot some bending with this high ISO setting. But in general, overall, the image quality of the camera is very high and in line with what you would expect from Leica's reputation in this re regard. Autofocus is another of the uh, new uh, features of the, of the camera. It's not that the previous didn't have an autofocus, but the new one has a more uh, modern and more uh, feature-packed autofocusing system. Uh, there's a reliable tracking, a face tracking is finally av available and it's fast and reliable. I definitely missed some shots, but I can pretty much mm, sh say that it was user error because I don't know the camera very well so I didn't have the time to just get used um, with the way the camera focuses so I would say that uh, in my opinion the autofocus is uh, more than enough for this type of camera and I believe for cameras like this there's nothing better around of course I haven't tried all the potential cameras but among those that I've tried it's hard to find something that is uh, way better than, 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 than this. Of course, for the, this is related to the audience that this camera is designed for. You're not going to shoot sports. You're not going to shoot uh, wildlife with this. So you cannot expect Sony's A1 or Canon R3 uh, autofocusing system with this camera. It's not what this camera is meant for. And you got to think about it when you, when you speak about autofocus. Again, for the audience this camera is designed for, the autofocus is more than capable and it's more than re re reliable. And to me, this is a big plus because I'm an autofocus type of guy. I'm not minus fo focusing that much. So that to me is an important thing. The fact that it may be derived from Panasonic's AF system doesn't really bother me that much. At the end of the day, autofocus is something that you need to have a lot of R&D uh, involvement get good at and uh, autofocus is not the main uh, let us say business uh, in of like a system their M camera is man is manual focus so it's not that they have uh, a huge uh, sample of autofocusing system so if someone else does it someone else that you share some of the um, components with uh, and some, someone you can collaborate with. Someone has a, a good system, uh, borrowing it from them, it's not a big problem to me. Actually, it's probably the best choice because going uh, like flat out with a brand new system would take years for Lakers for Laker to catch uh, with, with the competition. Maybe I'm not a purist uh, and I don't care too much, but I still ask myself, why would I expect Lega to invest that much in something where others can cooperate and get you better re results? That's, that's it. So to me, autofocus for this camera is more than enough for what this camera is for. So, is this camera worth the hype? That's a very personal question and the answer that each one of us can get can give to this question may vary dr dramatically to me the answer is yes i although i personally can't justify spending this much for this camera i definitely believe that this camera lives up to the hype uh, that comes with it uh, especially because if you consider the competition uh, it is clear how leica has found themselves in a niche, a niche that basically has no com com competition. Because when it comes to compact, full frame, compact cameras with fixed prime lens, uh, there's basically no competition with the exception of the Sony R1X Mark II. But that camera is old, the autofocus is not good at all. And even the sensor is not comparable 
uh, to what Leica uh, gives you in this one. And in general, the Q3 is a way better camera to handle and to use. The viewfinder is way better, the screen is way better. You can definitely see that there's seven years of difference, I guess, uh, between the two cameras or four, maybe. I don't remember, but it doesn't make too much difference. So there's basically no competition for this camera. So yes, $6,000 is a lot of money for a camera like, like that. But what goes into that is the uniqueness of the camera, the uniqueness of the brand and its own history, and the high quality of the craftsmanship that uh, is put into the camera. Now, whether you can justify spending that much on this camera, uh, it's not based on um, scientific results. Uh, can you get similar results with, the, with less money? Definitely. You definitely can because uh, maybe you don't get the exact same quality, but sure, you can find combinations that get you a close result and by working on the RAW, you can get very similar re result. Uh, you can find millions of reasons to consider this camera overpriced and you would be right. There's millions of reasons to consider this camera overpriced. But Leica is Leica and there's a reason for that. And this reflects also in the high value that the, each of their camera retains in the used market. And speaking of the used market, I believe the only competition to this camera is Leica's on Q2, so the predecessor to this camera. Because at the end of the day, you get the same lens, a very similar body, and in general, very similar experience in a super well-crafted body with... Um, something that you leave on the table if you go with, with, the, with the Q2 because you lose uh, the tilt screen, you lose the modern AF, you, so, you lose some video qualities, although I didn't test it, I know what, what it's capable of. And, and other uh, things that got uh, upgraded with the new gen generation, but overall, the experience is very similar. So if you have to consider the competition, the Q2 is the only one that I would consider. But what what would I do? What would I do? Would I buy the Q2 or would I go all in on the Q3? If it was for me, I mean, if I had to do, if I have to decide between the two, I would walk the extra mile and uh, go with the Q3. Just because the Q2 retains a super high value in the, in the used market. And so the difference between the Q2 and the Q3, it's not dramatic. I mean, it is, we're talking about more than $1,000. And so there is a substantial difference. But if you're already willing to spend $4,000, $4,500 on a Q2, then I'd say just do it. Just walk the extra mile and go for the Q3. Just because... Probably it's because I am a modern guy. The tilt screen, together with the better autofocusing system, and in general, the uh, relocation of the dials on the right, makes it for a better experience. And since you're paying a lot of money anyways, for a camera that realistically you're going to keep for a long time, I would go, I would walk the extra mile and get the Q3. Of course, if a Q2 could be found around $2,000, that would be a completely different change of scenario. You can get it, if you could get it for half the price, I would definitely say, definitely explore the possibility of getting the Q2 because I'm pretty sure that one has a high quality anyways, even from an image quality standpoint. But as it stands, there's no reason, in my opinion, to go for a used Q2 against a brand new Q Q3. I believe that's it for today. I hope uh you like the, this content um don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and leave me your comments in the in, in the comment section below because i want to know what you think about the camera if you're thinking about buying it if you had an experience with a Leica q and you want to share what is your uh, experience with that i would definitely appreciate that so thank you again that's it for today ciao and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye